living in a sumo wrestling house for two days? Well, let's just say I've never eaten so much, sweated so much, or felt so tiny in my life. Here's a glimpse of my experience. Upon arriving, I was greeted by wrestlers who looked like they could bench press a small car, or me, easily. My first order of business, eating before training, because in sumo, the more you weigh, the better. They sat me down in front of a giant pot of chenko nado, a stew loaded with meat, fish, tofu, and vegetables. It's the fuel that keeps these behemoths in fighting shape. A normal person might eat one bowl. Sumo wrestlers, they'll go through three or four, followed by some rice. After devouring enough calories to feed a village, I waddled to the training area. The training, sweat, sweat, and more sweat. Watching these massive guys in action is like watching ballet, if ballet involved slapping, body slamming, and bear hugging. These athletes train for hours, practicing footwork, doing repetitive sumo stomps, and shoving each other around the ring. I gave it a try, and let's just say I lasted about 10 seconds before I got bulldozed by a 350 pound wrestler named Kento. No hard feelings. He was so polite after squashing me. Oh, and did I mention the heat? It's hot. The training space is like a sauna. I lost five pounds in sweat alone, but probably gained it back by the time dinner rolled around. Meals are serious business. Wrestlers eat around 7,000 to 10,000 calories a day. After training, it was back to the Chenko Navy, rice and some fried stuff I didn't even question. The goal? Pack on the pounds. I was told to eat until I couldn't eat anymore, then eat a little more just to be sure. The lifestyle, discipline, and a lot of rest. Sumo wrestlers live a structured life. They wake up at the crack of dawn for hours of intense training, then they eat and nap. Yes, naps are a crucial part of bulking up. In fact, after the massive lunch, the wrestlers disappear into their rooms for a long afternoon sleep. And me? I did the same. I mean, after stuffing myself like a sumo wrestler, all I wanted was to lie down in a food coma. Sleeping arrangements were simple. Futons on the floor, just like everyone else. It was surprisingly cozy, though I was surrounded by the loudest snorers on the planet. Picture this, a symphony of bears in hibernation. Needless to say, earplugs were my best friend. On the second day, I got to witness some real sparring matches. These guys are serious. The power, the strategy, it's like chess, but with human tanks. Watching them slap each other, push, and try to throw one another out of the ring was both exhilarating and humbling. These guys are pure muscle with a healthy layer of protective fat. Living like a sumo wrestler for just 48 hours gave me a newfound respect for these athletes. It was a real eye-opener. These guys aren't just huge. They're part of a fascinating culture with traditions that go back centuries. Here are some fun tidbits I learned while trying to keep up with them and not get flattened. One, sumo wrestlers aren't always overweight. Despite their size, sumo wrestlers are incredibly muscular. Underneath all that protective padding is a body built from hours of daily training. In fact, they've been found to have very low levels of visceral fat, the dangerous kind of fat that wraps around your organs. So while they're big on the outside, they're lean and strong on the inside. I tried doing a leg squat next to one of them. Let's just say it wasn't a competition I won. Two, sumo wrestlers wear their rank, laterally. The top-ranked wrestlers, known as Yokozuna, wear a special thick rope called a tsuna around their waist during ceremonial duties. It's similar to how a black belt in karate signifies a master, but in sumo, the bigger the belt, the higher the rank. So, when I saw a Yokozuna's belt, I knew I was in the presence of sumo royalty. I kept my distance. Didn't want to get sumo smacked by accident. Three, sumo wrestlers don't worry about their hair falling out. Why? because sumo wrestlers grow their hair long and wear it in a traditional chonmi or top knot, which actually helps protect their heads during falls. If a sumo wrestler loses his hair, he's considered past his prime, so that top knot isn't just for show, it's functional. I even watched one of the wrestlers get his hair styled by the resident sumo barber, who's specially trained just for this task. Four, sumo wrestlers have a strict hierarchy. Sumo life is very hierarchical. Younger, lower ranked wrestlers, called Rikishi, are responsible for all sorts of chores, cooking, cleaning, even giving massages to the senior wrestlers. So if you're new to the house, your job is to keep the place spotless and make sure the higher ranked guys are well fed. I, thankfully, was a guest, so no cleaning duty for me. But I did see a young Rikishi scurrying around, making sure all the teacups were refilled. Five, sumo wrestlers are superstitious. Before each bout, you'll see sumo wrestlers throwing salt into the ring. This is part of a purification ritual meant to ward off evil spirits and bring good luck. 
I tried tossing some salt into my food bowl, but apparently that's not how it works. They also slap their bellies and stomp their feet to scare off bad vibes. It's all part of the drama and ceremony that makes sumo so unique. Six, sumo wrestlers don't drink water during training. That's right, no water breaks during those grueling hours long training sessions. Instead, they hydrate after the workout and with their massive meals. The idea is to train their bodies to sweat more, helping with weight gain and endurance. Let me tell you, after getting body checked by a wrestler, I would have traded my soul for a bottle of water. Seven, retirement comes with a haircut ceremony. When sumo wrestlers retire, they have a special danpatsu shiki, or haircutting ceremony, where their top knot is cut off in front of a crowd. It's a big deal, and for the wrestler, it symbolizes moving on from the sumo life. I saw some photos of these ceremonies, and honestly, it's pretty emotional stuff. Cutting off that top knot is like the end of an era. Eight, sumo diet. All about balance. Though they're famous for consuming insane amounts of food, sumo wrestlers follow a balanced diet focused on protein, vegetables, and carbs, with their favorite dish being chanko nabe. It's not the food itself that's fatty, it's the quantities. Fun fact, the stew changes depending on the season with different meats and veggies. They've even been known to throw in some beer for flavor and extra calories, of course. Experiencing life with sumo wrestlers was a mix of awe, sweat, and constant munching. But it also opened my eyes to how much history and dedication goes into the sport. Plus, now I have the fun bragging rights of saying, Yeah, I survived two days in a sumo house. Just don't ask how many bowls of stew I had. It's embarrassing.